allow me to ask this question. How long can a nation survive that consistently curses God and refuses to obey His Word? This is Truth to Ponder with Bob Bierman. And welcome to the Wednesday edition of Truth to Ponder, and I'm your host, Bob Bierman. I ask that question for a reason. When you look over history and you look at any nation, whether they were even a, quote, Christian nation or not, there comes a point in a nation's history where everything self-destructs. The Roman Empire is a good example. They were a mighty and powerful, respected and feared entity in their time, and that was for hundreds of years. But in the latter part, in the latter part of that empire, they gave themselves over to to certain sins and certain things and certain attitudes and beliefs and behaviors that ultimately did them in. You look at Europe. For many, many years, Europe had the benefit of a belief system based upon Christianity. Now, I will tell you up front that in Europe, Christianity, for the most part, has been squandered, abused, and misused. Sure, there have always been a remnant of true believers, even in Europe and even to this day. But I am convinced that true believers in Christianity have always been, even in Europe, in the minority. It has been used, abused, and misused as a, as a method of power and control. This is where having this marriage of church and state is a very dangerous thing. Just look at what's happening in England. Church of England, it is self-destructing before your very eyes. It is going into trying to excuse and apologize for its speaking out against sin over the years. The lampstand, as shown in the book of Revelation for that particular church, I think is long gone. Just like the Episcopal Church in America, the Anglican Church in Canada or Australia or anywhere else, except maybe on the continent of Africa, has become theologically, morally, and just spiritually bankrupt. It's useless. It's worthless. It has no saving grace left in it. Get out of it. It's happening in the Presbyterian Church, in the Evangelical Lutheran Church in America. Once church bodies, United Methodist Church too, that proclaim the gospel are now proclaiming nonsense, silliness, and just satanic garbage, deadly satanic garbage. When you see pastors presiding over same-sex weddings and, and declaring that Jesus would love it, they're liars. So how far can a nation go? The United States has been inching for quite a long time. There's always been this seed of dissent. There's always been this undercurrent trying to overtake the United States. And unfortunately, it is now succeeding, whether we want to believe it or not. We are a nation that has a bunch of phony conservatives running around looking for your vote then stabbing you in the back. You have one party that openly has booed God and has cursed him. They've made a mockery of his word and his people. How long is God going to sit by? You have governors in certain states making them sanctuaries for Moloch worship, which is another way of saying abortion. Transgenderism, the mutilation of young children's bodies. How long is this going to go on? I could list on and on where our nation is heading, and there's no doubt in my mind there is nothing left to save. There's nothing left but a remnant church. I I drive around communities and I see these woke little happy churches 
that no longer proclaim the gospel, those that do. Look, even in the Southern Baptist Church, it is imploding from within. You have many of these contemporary churches where sexual immorality is tolerated to a degree. And it is the downfall often of the leadership. The United States is on the verge of God's judgment. And so one of the things that I believe needs to be done, whether you agree with me or not, the revival people say we can get a revival. We're going to fix America. We're going to fix it at the ballot box too. Don't believe it. It's not going to happen. We've gone too far. And there's judgment to pay. There is a consequence for what has occurred in our world. That is why I really believe in some of the things that God has laid upon my heart in a direction for this particular ministry. To prepare places of sanctuary in what will be some very difficult times ahead. I've said this many times before. I don't know if this is going to be the great tribulation or not, but it is going to be a time of tribulation. I see it coming. And I don't believe God's going to hold back much longer. And so the true church, the true believers must be prepared for such a time as this, as they have been over the past almost 2,000 years. God is still on his throne. And God is going to do what God is going to do regardless of us. I'll talk about that more tomorrow on the program. Now for today, your friend and mine, Jim Calhoun, is going to continue on this particular theme. And it is something that I really believe you need to listen to today. This is important stuff. This is not to be pushed aside. This is probably one of the most urgent topics we can talk about. I'm tired of politics all the time. It's time to get into God's Word, and here's Jim Calhoun. Thanks, Bob. It's great to be back on Truth to Ponder. I want to start off by thanking everyone for their prayers for Bob Bierman. I know I reached out to lots of people, and there are lots of prayer chains going for Bob, and I really do appreciate it. And also, for the people who are praying for me, thank you so much. Because the power of prayer is undeniable. And I really do appreciate your prayers. Well, I've been doing lots of research and studying, not only for my show, but also for Truth to Ponder. And there's a growing trend that I'm seeing, and it's growing very fast. And I want to talk about that today as my main topic. And what that is, is the demise of America as far as being a respected world power because it's no longer respected. And I'm going to be giving you some anecdotal evidence, as well as hard evidence, and I'm also going to use analogies to try to make my point. And I'm going to start off with an analogy. And I want you to think of this person as I describe this person. Let's say that you're in middle school. Let's say eighth grade. And there's a person in your school that is the school bully. This person has to butt into everyone's affairs, has to know what everyone's saying, has to know what everyone's doing, steals people's lunch money, steals food off other people's plate, is someone that you really can't relate with or talk to. It's someone that does not take constructive criticism. It's someone that has to always be the center of attention. The type of person that when you see them walking towards you down the hall, You just feel like you want to turn and walk the other way. Have you ever met a person like that? Someone that thinks the world revolves around them and they can do no wrong? And when you're playing a game with them, whether it be an organized sport or maybe just a simple card game or whatever, they seem to have their own set of rules and they change the rules as they go along so they can win. And even when this type of a person is wrong, they will never admit it. Because in their mind, they're perfect. And so what they do is they justify everything they do. Have you known anyone like that? Well, I have. And they're not very pleasant to be around. And unless they grow up and understand what they are 
and how they are. It's just hopeless for them. They're going to have a very long, lonely, miserable life. Because they'll never really realize their full potential because they're so full of themselves, they think that they're already God's gift to humanity. And so you can't improve upon that. So they just end up being what they are and who they are and how they are. And it's a shame that there are people like that. Now that you have this vision of this person in your head, I'm going to tell you what I'm finding. And I'm not seeing this in a small way. I'm seeing this in a huge way. The United States of America worldwide is looked at as that person that I just described. If another country invades another country without the consent of the United States, well, then the United States puts sanctions on them and does all sorts of things to try to hurt that country that invaded the other country. But when the United States wants to invade another country, that's just fine. If we want to go to Iraq or Afghanistan or Somalia or anywhere else in the world, then that's just fine. But if another country does that, well, that's horrible. And right now you have the United States government that are actively claiming that China is getting militarily aggressive. Whereas it's my understanding that China only has two military bases that are not in China. Whereas the United States has multitudes of bases all around the world. And then you have the United States and also the other Western countries that are confiscating people's money because they happen to be Russian. They're not part of the government. They're not part of the conflict in Ukraine. They have nothing to do with it, except their nationality is Russian. And so worldwide, Russian assets are being seized. And they're able to seize these assets because Russia has invested money into the West, especially into the Western banking systems. And right now, Switzerland is on the verge of confiscating a whole lot of money from Russian citizens. And what that ultimately does is it sends a message to the rest of the world that this banking system in the West cannot be trusted. And so what these people are actually doing as being bullies is that they are alienating the entire world. You do realize that Russia's economy right now is stronger than it was before illegitimate Joe started putting all sorts of sanctions on Russia. And of course, they still have sanctions on Russia because of the Russiagate hoax that Hillary Clinton initiated, which is a total lie, a total hoax. But yet, there's still sanctions on Russia because of that. Does that make any sense? Well, it does if you're a bully, and it does if you want to create your own rules and play the game as you want to play it, so there's no way you can lose. And I'm going to tell you right now, the people on the continent of Africa are looking at this whole situation, and they're seeing the United States as that person that you don't want to be around. They see the United States as untrustworthy, that they go back on their word, that they don't do anything that helps another country without helping themselves. And I know that there's a lot of foreign aid that gets passed out from the American taxpayer. You might say, well, the people in these countries are ungrateful. And maybe some of that is the case. But the vast majority of the aid money goes to the government's. And the governments just simply pocket the money. It doesn't go to the common people of any country. Not commonly, anyway. And I'm talking about the common people of these countries. Do you realize that the United States has slipped so far that the United States is more despised by a large margin than respected? And how can I say this? Well, from all of my research, I like to read the news stories, and I go to different countries and read the news according to their perspective. And worldwide, the news organizations are basically just propaganda. doesn't matter if it's Russian or American or Chinese or whatever. It's propaganda. But when you read the comments, now I know there's bots and there's what are called trolls and people that are paid to post certain things onto certain accounts. I understand all of that. But you can always tell when someone is over the top 
and you can tell when someone has a heartfelt opinion that they want to share. I would say at least 90% of the time you can kind of hone in who is for real and who is not. And the vast majority of people in the world now see the United States as being something they do not want to emulate. Now you might say, well, how come so many people want to come to the United States and they're crashing the southern border? A lot of these people are crashing the border because they have ill intentions of what they want to do to this country. And so there's all sorts of criminals and things like that crossing the border that they're not crossing for an opportunity to better themselves. They're crossing for an opportunity to hurt this country. That's why we must defend our southern border. And there are some legitimate people that are crossing that actually love the United States and they want to be part of this. And so I'm not saying everybody hates the United States. But what I'm getting as far as feedback when I'm reading people's posts, and I spend several hours a week reading opinions from different countries. And right now, the United States is throwing such a fit over what's happening in Ukraine that the world knows that the United States invaded Afghanistan. And the world knows the United States invaded Iraq and Vietnam and Panama and Somalia. And the world knows that there's military bases all over the world that are American military bases. They know this. And they're being told, Russia bad. You must send all your weapons that you can to Ukraine to kill Russians. And to be brutally honest, the CIA and the FBI and the corruption of the United States government has been so prevalent for so long that the vast majority of the common people of the world don't trust anything from the United States. While there's been all sorts of seeds planted all over the world that is taking the United States down as far as prestige. Now, not the people. I find that most of the people of the world actually have sympathy for the average American because a lot of these countries have experienced dictatorships and poor leadership and all sorts of things like that. And they see that's what's happening. And so their resentment is not against we the people in the United States, but it's the government. They look at the United States government as being nothing but an evil, corrupt thing. And they look at the United States media as being a branch of that government. And also, they look at Hollywood the same way. And so Hollywood, the news media, and the United States government are despised in this world more than you can possibly know. Now, in Africa, China has been doing a lot in Africa, lots of investing. And people might say they've been doing lots of meddling in Africa. And while I can't say that they have not been meddling, I know that from my research that China has done a whole lot more investing than they have meddling. And it's not Chinese troops that have went into Somalia and other places. And it wasn't the Chinese that took out Gaddafi. And the world knows this. And they've been watching. They've been watching really close for the last 30 years. And what the world, and I'm talking about the common people, the consensus is, is why do anything to kill Russians? Because while the United States has been spreading its woke and spreading its anti-family and its pro-abortion, the LBGBTPQB, whatever it is, whatever it is this week, they are spreading that, and the cultures of the world look at the United States where the culture is going, and they say, no, emphatically, no. Can you see the Islamic world becoming woke? Can you see the Islamic world having men say that they're menstruating? Do you see the Islamic world accepting, quote-unquote, transgender? They'll never accept that. Do you see the ancient cultures in Asia accepting that? Do you see any of the countries in Africa and also the tribal areas of Africa where you have different tribes that are warring to control the government? Can you see from the tribes on up to the elected governments in Africa, can you see any culture in Africa that is going to embrace American wokeness? 
And are you going to see the Central American and South American culture? Are you going to see that very strong patriarch culture? Are you going to see that change and become woke? No, you're not. The only place where this woke movement has really gained a foothold is in the Western world. That's the United States, Canada, all of Europe, Australia, New Zealand. Those are the only places that are espousing this belief system. And the rest of the world does not want that to come to their culture at all. And so you have people that are emphatically standing against the United States. Very, very strong. And so I feel that every day Russia and China get stronger because the average people of the world, of all these different cultures, see more in common with China and more in common with Russia than they do with the United States. They look and see what's happening in the United States and you got drag queen story time and you have boys playing in girls sports and all sorts of things that culturally they do not understand. And so in a nutshell, most of the people think that the Western culture has gone absolutely insane and they're repulsed by it. And they're repulsed by it to the point that they would fight for their own culture. And so there are people actively wanting to see the United States crumble into dust, as well as Canada and the UK and the entire Western world. They want to see it crumble because they see it as decadent and evil, and they see it full of tyranny, and they see that bully, that person that, when I opened the show, I talked about that person you don't like, that you don't want to see, that you just don't want to be around at all. The United States and its Western allies have become that person. So as you look around the world and you think of these coalitions that possibly would have to be built to stand against, let's say, the United States against Russia, it seems the United States is out trying to build a coalition. But what's happening is that the people on the outside are looking at this and they're choosing sides. And so this coalition that the United States has to build will be the same old guilty parties. It'll be Germany and UK and Canada and France and Australia and New Zealand and the rest of the European countries. But this time, you're going to have most countries in Africa, Central America, South America, and Asia go up against that. And right now you have the BRICS, which is Brazil, Russia, India, China, and South Africa. And there are more countries applying to join that group. And right now, we're seeing a shift from American dominance and Western culture dominance to Asian dominance. And we've done it to ourselves by shipping all of our jobs over to China and a lot of them to Mexico. But the ones to China are the ones that are going to hurt us the most. But you have China buying gold in record numbers from Russia. You're having record exports from Russia, their oil, they're exporting all over to Asia. And so the Asian economies are going to be just fine. And Russia is tying itself with the Asian economies now. And I'm going to tell you, not in my lifetime, and I'm going to say not in anyone's lifetime that's hearing this broadcast, are you ever going to see Russia trust the West again on anything? And Russia happens to have most of the natural resources that the world needs. All of these natural resources are going to go to Asia, but they won't be going to Japan either because Japan has sided with the West. And so as a common American citizen, looking at all of these different opinions from all of these people from around the world, it makes me absolutely sick to know that our government and its corruption has done so much damage to the prestige of the greatest nation that the earth has ever seen. Now, there was a time when the whole world thought that. But now, people don't see that at all. A perfect example is Daniel Swift, who recently died fighting in Ukraine. The Russians killed him. And he was a U.S. Navy SEAL. And since it's been reported that he died... The United States government has classified him as an active deserter, but yet 
When they reported his death, they said he was killed in action. Killed in action is always reserved for someone that's serving their country. I don't think there's ever been a deserter ever that the United States government has ever said was killed in action. So the world, and including me on this one, I smell a rat. I think that we have troops on the ground fighting in Ukraine. And I think that any of them that get killed, they're going to be disavowed. And they're going to become deserters or mercenaries. I think that the United States government saying that Daniel Swift was killed in action, I think that was a slip. I think that someone is going to get in a lot of trouble for letting that one out. But from what I'm gathering by checking all of these different countries and reading about this story specifically, is that 100% of every comment, and some sites have hundreds of comments, think that Daniel Swift was CIA and was active duty, and that the United States is lying about his deserter status. And as the United States confiscates more money all around the world from average citizens that just happen to be of one ethnicity or from one country, you're seeing the world see the United States as nothing but one huge corrupt criminal organization that they shouldn't trust. There were several countries where some of the people that were posting their comments on the stories were saying, well, if the United States can take other people's wealth away from them and confiscate their businesses, why can't we go down and just take the McDonald's or whatever other corporation has invested in their country? Why can't we just go grab it and say, we're going to rename it, we're just going to own it, and we're just going to take it because we can, because it's on our soil. Now, while I hope that doesn't happen, you have to understand that a lot of public opinion and also law is based on case law and also certain actions, what people can get by with, what people have done in the past, and by their actions and by nothing happening punitive against that, that it's somehow condoned. And the United States and the rest of the Western nations have opened a Pandora's box as they confiscate the wealth of Russian citizens. All of a sudden, that makes American citizens fair game for other countries to confiscate their wealth because there's already been a precedence set. And so not only are we on shaky ground as far as World War III, we're on shaky ground all the way across. And as an American citizen, it really breaks my heart to see my great country being talked about in the way it's being talked about. And at first, I took offense to it. But after reading hundreds of comments, it dawned on me that these people were not accusing the United States of doing anything that they hadn't done. They were not saying anything that was totally made up. They were not saying anything that was untrue. We did invade Afghanistan. We did invade Iraq. We did invade all these other countries. We do have military bases all over the world. We do have gain-of-function type of biolabs all over the world. We are doing this. We are confiscating people's money. We are putting sanctions on people. We are holding people to account for things that they do. Even if the United States does the same thing, it's okay if we do it, but it's not if they do it. And on the other side of the break, I'm going to tell you why this is so important for us to understand what's going on worldwide. And I'll be right back after this. And thank you, Jim. And Jim will be right back with part two of the program in just a moment. And while I have a moment to step in, I want to thank Jim for helping me out as he's been doing for so many months. It is a godsend and a true blessing for me. Let me ask you this question. What do you think the purpose of truth to ponder in any associated ministry should be? I don't want to be just another news program. I don't need to duplicate what you're finding at Gateway Pundit or or Sean Hannity or Laura Ingram or uh, 
Shapiro, Ben Shapiro. I mean, I don't need to be just another one of those voices. And too many of them have become, and I hate to say this, but they work for large corporations that kind of control what they're really allowed to say, what they are really allowed to do. On the other hand, I don't want to be a big ministry in terms of preaching the word of God that is so big that it may be compromised because of trying to, well, make donors happy. It's not easy to do something like this radio program. Sure, I really believe there is a true need to talk about certain very topical and important issues. There's no doubt in my mind. And I need to also share those in the light of God's word. But I want to do it in such a way as to be Christ honoring. I want to do it in such a way as to be able to teach you from God's word what it all means. Simply reading news stories like I did on Monday and mentioned again on Tuesday. And I'll probably talk a little bit more about it tomorrow and a few other stories. These are nothing but but signs of our time. And how do we get ourselves together? That'll be tomorrow's topic. Now, if you believe in the ministry we're doing, number one, maybe send me an email. Let me know what you think, what we should be doing. You can go to our website, truth2ponder.com. Or you can mail us at Truth to Ponder, P.O. Box 510, in Chilhowie, C-H-I-L-H-O-W-I-E, Chill Howie, Virginia, 24319. That's P.O. Box 510, Chill Howie, Virginia, zip code 24319. If you can support us, simply make a check made payable to Ancient Word Radio. By the way, you can support us from the website as well. This is Truth to Ponder with Bob Bierman, the Torah of Spirit. Shalom Aleichem, this is the nice Jewish boy, Jonathan Kahn, your Jewish connection, bringing you the riches of your Jewish roots in Jesus. Now get your pen out as fast as you can so you don't miss out. You're receiving a special free gift you're going to get and love in a moment. In Jeremiah 31, 31, it speaks of the new covenant. God promises Israel a new covenant, a brit hadasha in Hebrew, the new covenant. The time is coming, says the Lord, I'll make a new covenant, not like the old one, I'll write it on their hearts. Well, the old covenant had 613 commandments for every part of your life, for eating, clothing, hygiene, worship, fellowship, legal affairs, marriage, domestic life, taking out the garbage, everything. (laughs) So life in the spirit... The new covenant of the spirit is also for every part of your life. It also has spirit, spiritual laws and movings for every part of your life. There were 613, probably has a lot more than that. And the new covenant says he'll write it on our heart. But, but that means all the, all the commandments of the spirit. The spirit commands not by force, but by being moved by the spirit. There's a, there's a way to live in the spirit for every part of your life. I mean, if it happened with a law and, and the tablets of stone, so much more for the spirit, for this way to dress in the spirit. Walk in the spirit, wash in the spirit, work in the spirit, take out the garbage in the spirit. You know, the Orthodox Jew lives out every detail according to the law. Well, you're in the spirit. There's a spirit way to raise your children, to speak, to answer, to respond, to 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 play, to do your job, to go shopping in the spirit. It means every part of your life is to be a worship service. He's got a law of the spirit so that he has put his spirit within you so that you at all times can walk in the spirit of God and fulfill the law or the Torah of the Spirit. Want more? Ask for The Spirit-Filled Life on CD. Now, do you believe that your walk with God could use a real spiritual boost? Well, we got something to help. A free subscription of Sapphires uses directed. It can revolutionize your walk for victories like vitamins for your spirit and the incredible Mystery of the Temple doors on CD. All free. You'll love it. How do you get it? Easy. Just remember Jesus really would name Yeshua and you dial it. That's it. So just call 1-800-YESHUA-1 for your free gifts. You will be blessed. But call now 1-800-YESHUA-1. Now I invite you to minister with me in two of the most exciting ministries to be in the 
the word of life around the earth by shortwave radio from every tribe and tongue. It's amazing to the Jewish people and to the nations. How? Just call 1-800-YESHUA-1. We do it every day on shortwave radio. You can do it too. Just call 1-800-YESHUA-1 or you can write me direct. Here's how. Let's write to the nice Jewish boy, Box 1111, Lodi, L-O-D-I, New Jersey, 07644. It's a nice Jewish boy, Box 1111, Lodi, New Jersey, 07644. Till next time, this is Jonathan Kahn saying Shalom Aleichem. Peace be to you, my friend, in Messiah, HaDerach HaEmet, the way, the truth, and the life. This is Truth to Ponder with Bob Bierman. Welcome back to part two of Truth to Ponder. This is Jim Calhoun sitting in for Bob Bierman today. And Bob will be back tomorrow with another great edition of Truth to Ponder. Before I pick up where I left off as far as in the first half of the show when I'm talking about how other people view America right now, I want to take this time and give a great big shout out to all the ranchers in central Nebraska. We've been suffering a horrible drought here, and I'm really glad for the snow that we got, but we got mountains of snow. Now where I'm at, we got around 12 inches. I just got back from a trip where I drove 100 miles northeast of here, and they got up to three feet of snow. And we had high wind, and so there's all sorts of snow drifts, and, and you can see where the roads were closed for miles and miles. And that's been three days ago. And while I was driving down the roads, the snow piles on the side of the roads were a minimum of four feet high. I saw at least a hundred herds of cattle that were out into these fields. And the fields had anywhere from two to three feet of snow in the field. And I don't know how many hundreds of thousands, if not millions of tons of snow that had to be moved before the ranchers could get to their hay pile and also make a trail to get their hay out to their cattle and clear a spot so the cattle could eat and lay down. But every herd I drove past, I estimated around a 100. Every one of the herds had a path cleared to water and they had multiple areas to lay down and all of them were well fed. And the massive work that that took for these ranchers to care for their cattle was amazing. When you look at the amount of snow that had to be moved in a three-day period, it's astronomical. And Nebraska is not big on corporate farms, so I would say the vast majority, if not all, of the herds of cattle I saw are family farms. And I just want to give a big shout-out to all the hard work it took to take care of their animals and also to help feed America and the world. That work was just amazing. And there's another thing that I found amazing on this trip I want to touch on really fast is that I have talked about in past shows the wildlife disappearing. Well, this is just the opposite, but this is really strange. In all of this snow, and also you got to understand that we're in January, several flocks of three different species of birds that were migrating, that they were flying north. And I never see these birds until March. And so what is going on that there are three species of birds that are migrating in mass heading north, especially with all the snow we have? I saw several flocks and pretty large flocks of meadowlarks. And meadowlarks generally don't come until the grass starts greening up and the chance of snow is almost nothing. That's when they show up. So what are they doing here two or three months early? I don't know. And also, the black crows had hundreds of black crows. And they were all flocked together. And also flocks of starlings. I've never seen anything like it. So there definitely is something going on that's screwing up the habits or the instincts or something of these birds. Because there's no way that these birds should be in Nebraska at this time. They should still be wintering down south. And so why are they migrating north? Does that mean that spring is going to be here real early? Or does that mean something nefarious? 
I don't know. But I thought I should give everyone an update as far as what I'm seeing in the animal world. Now I'm going to get back onto the subject that America has lost its prestige. It seems that American movies have got so bad as far as pushing transgender and woke and all sorts of family values, quote unquote, that traditional families just detest that I'm seeing lots of people worldwide naming other countries that have a booming movie industry, that they are only watching movies that are produced in these other countries. They named five or six other countries that are not in the Western world that are producing movies. I've never seen any movies from these countries, and so I can't comment on the quality of the movie. But I can comment that worldwide, People are looking at Hollywood and seeing the evil. And I know that about 10 years ago, I quit going to movies because I got sick of the indoctrination. And so I understand what these people are talking about because I see the same thing. But it was the American cinema that really put out the, I'm going to call it the myth or the saga or whatever you want to call it, of the American dream. And America's the great place and come to America and... America's great. They saw this through our movies. People worldwide were watching films made in Hollywood and wishing they were part of America. Now, that was in years past. Now they're watching American movies and they're walking out and they're saying never again. And people are being deeply offended by this woke movement. Now, you might think that the woke movement is really popular and gaining lots of momentum. Well, it is in certain places college campuses and liberal-run cities and states, wokeism is alive and well. But when you look at how the world views the United States because of that, it becomes apparent that we are being basically walled in. What the world is going to do is the world is going to move on. Nothing happens in a vacuum. And it's going to move on without us. Now you might say, well, good for them. How's that going to hurt me? Well, I'm going to tell you how it's going to hurt you. Right now, lots of countries are negotiating ways to transfer goods and services and not use the United States dollar as payment. Now, the United States dollar is this world standard. It is the currency that is legal tender everywhere in the world. But right now, you have different countries Saudi Arabia was one that this last week is open to trading their oil and using anything other than the United States dollar. And of course, you have China that has been pushing for several years to have their currency take the place of the United States dollar. And also the BRICS that I mentioned are contemplating what kind of currency that they're going to use as their standard. But nobody worldwide In these areas, and I'm talking Asia, Africa, South and Central America, none of these places want to use the American dollar. And now it's going into the Middle East. When you have Saudi Arabia openly stating that they will trade oil and are willing to be paid in something other than the United States petrodollar. And what that means to us is that if you can buy oil and pay in rubles or Deutschmarks or some other currency, all of a sudden, all of the American currency that these countries hold, and the only reason they have it is to use it to buy things and sell things worldwide. If they can buy and sell worldwide and not go through the middleman United States, guess where that money's going to come? All that money, all these cash reserves that are held in American dollars, are going to come back to the United States because these countries will no longer need these dollars. And so if you think inflation is bad now, just wait until we're flooded with all of these American dollars that are no longer being used in worldwide trade. And if you're one of those that think, well, that's never going to happen, the dollar's always going to be there because it's the most safe currency in the world. Well, it's not safe if the country that issues it 
is confiscating money all over the place and doing all sorts of nefarious things. People don't want to deal with the bully. People don't want to deal with someone that doesn't honor their word. I feel that the United States dollar is an endangered species right now because the world, and I'm talking to common people of the world that are commenting on all these sites, they don't want to use the dollar anymore. The dollar no longer holds its prestige. To them, it's a symbol of basically slavery, being enslaved to the United States. And they see the United States as the class bully, the one that has to push everyone around, the one they don't want anything to do with. That includes the bully's money. They don't want anything to do with that bully. And that's going to absolutely crush investment in this country. It's going to really crush manufacturing. It's going to crush people's pensions. It's going to be horrible. And so if you don't get anything from this show other than this, please know this. Watch very carefully what's happening with the monetary systems of the world. Really keep close eye on that. Because I have a feeling that it's going to be like how a dam breaks. Once there's a breach in the dam, it might take a month or a year before that first breach happens. But once the dam is breached, the whole dam gives way. And so if you start seeing worldwide a huge movement towards ending the United States dollar, then I think it's time to do some very creative financial planning. Because I think that the average American investor is in very deep trouble here. Now, that's just my opinion. And a lot of this is anecdotal. But when you're seeing the same things in different websites from different countries, and they're all talking about the same issues, and they come to the same conclusions, and it's not just one or two, I'm talking hundreds of people, and other people giving a likes or a thumbs up, where someone might post, we're sick of using the American dollar for our transactions. Then you'll have 20 or 30 people give it a thumbs up and have 20 or 30 other people comment and say, yes, I agree. It seems to me that the world has not only fell out of love with the United States, it seems to me that they now despise the United States and everything that our government touches, including our money. And this is just my opinion, but I think that the only reason a lot of people like the United States was because the United States was giving them money. But now, if our money is despised, then we have nothing to fall back on. And so that's really concerning to me. Now, the next thing I want to touch on is Russia. I'm not one of these people that say Russia bad, nor am I one of these people that say Russia good. I know Russia's done some really bad things, but they've done some things that I really agree with. They're standing up against the woke and transgender and all of this. They're really standing up against it. And Russia seems to be promoting what we would consider family values, traditional family values. Russia is passing laws against the promotion of all of this transgender and all these other things. And while you might think that's oppressive, I really don't think it's oppressive to stand up for traditional values. I really don't. And so I have to applaud them for that. But the world other than the woke governments in the West... The rest of the world is applauding Russia and agrees with Russia, and it's going to stand with Russia. And so the United States trying to be the bully and try to get other countries from these areas of Africa and Central South America and Asia to actively try to help Ukraine against Russia is falling on deaf ears. There might be some countries of the world that are listening, but the ones that are are considered nothing but lapdogs for the United States. And I'll mention here that the average common people in the West don't want a world war. The average common people don't want to fight Russia. The average common people want to buy Russian oil and Russian gas. They want their homes to be warm. They want electricity. The average common people of the world are really against all of the things that are happening against Russia. Now, they're not for Russia. They're not wanting Russia to kill any Ukrainians. It has nothing to do with that. But they see 
that all of these sanctions are shooting their own country in the foot. And so as these people shiver in the cold without electricity, and their government is giving millions of dollars to Ukraine and telling their own people that that's the price they must pay, well, nobody asked the people in those countries. They're not happy with it. And so this whole thing about Ukraine and supporting Ukraine is built on a foundation of sand. And as I stated earlier, every day that the bully gets resisted, and again, the bully is the United States, as far as the majority of the world's countries are concerned, they're looking at Russia as being a hero. They're standing up against the bully. They're being applauded. It's not a lot of fun for me to read all of these comments and see what people actually think. But to get a pulse on what's happening worldwide, I think is very important in these troubled times. Because I know that the United States government has lied to us. I know that the elections are not fair and honest. I know that there's lots happening with the IRS and the CIA and also the Supreme Court is, I don't know what's happened to the Supreme Court, but they're losing credibility among the common people of this country, and the world is openly laughing at us because of the corruption in our court system. The world saw the riots of 2020. They saw the Black Lives Matter and the Antifa, and they saw the police doing nothing about it. And so the world sees the powers that be and our police departments as being part of the problem, as being part of the woke movement. And so there's no respect worldwide for our law enforcement or our laws. Now, how is this going to affect us? Well, right now, and I said I was going to concentrate on Russia. Right now, Russia has a bill that's been put before, I believe they call it the Duma, but we would call it the Senate, that there is a bill that was introduced by Vladimir Putin that would take the treaties that were signed with Europe and make them null and void. And a lot of these treaties have to do with anti-terrorism and things like that. But one of the things that they are going to make null and void is immunity for government officials. And so what Russia is doing, they've taken a giant step to basically divorce the West. And we need to see it as what it is. The United States and its allies, in the former president of France and also the former leader of Germany, Angela Merkel, have openly stated that the Minsk agreements that were signed by Ukraine and Russia as well as other countries was a farce. It was just put there to give Ukraine time to build up their military forces and so they could start this war. And so this war started a long time ago, and it's been planned for by the West for quite some time. And so Russia now says, well, we can't trust anything that you've done. And so they're making them all null and void. Diplomatically, the dam has broke. And there's no plans on any peace talks. There's no plans on any negotiations. Just a massive bunch of canceling of agreements. And that puts you in great danger. That puts me in great danger. And we have politicians in the West, not only the United States, but Canada and everywhere else in the Western world, that do not honor their agreements. They're not honorable people, and they're doing despicable things. The West is full of tyranny right now, and it's full of shenanigans like the gain-of-function research in biolabs and the COVID response and this concoction that I call the death jab that's hurting and killing so many people. And right now, people are trying to normalize children getting heart attacks and dying suddenly and things like that in the West that we're being told are normal. As well as right now, I just read that men can have menstrual cycles. The world sees this. The world is judging us, and they're judging us very harshly. And not only are they laughing at us, They're starting to really despise us. And so as a country, if we don't take our country back and give our country solid traditional values, if we don't do what it takes 
to save the reputation of our country, then we're going to suffer the consequences, not only economically, but also with warfare and possibly more terrorism. And I know right now that if you contact your senator or your congressperson or the White House, whatever your gripe may be is going to fall on deaf ears. Because these people are all walking in lockstep, Republican and Democrat. They're working for themselves. They're not working for you. They're not working for me. Now, that's just my opinion. But what I see them doing worldwide to the reputation of my country makes me sick. And I really don't know what we can do about it. But I think we need to be aware that this can come back and harm us, whether it gets us into multiple wars and possibly we see the return of the draft or possibly the value of your money going to practically nothing overnight. These things can happen. So we have to be very vigilant. We have to watch things happen and unfold. And we have to understand that things are not business as normal. It's not that, oh, it'll pass. It'll just go away. Everything will get back to normal. Don't think that. Because we're witnessing a changing of the guard. We're witnessing the death of the Western culture. And it's dying from within. With the woke movement and all these other things are killing our society from within. And I have to mention before I close, the absence of the church in standing up for traditional values. It seems like there's lots of denominations and lots of church groups that would rather be seen as hip and cool and with it. And so they'll try to do anything that they can to try to endear themselves to this woke movement and the transgender movement and these other things that are tearing down our society. I, for one, am doing everything I can to try to expose this for what it is, and I'm trying to get the average common people of the world to understand that it's up to us to save our societies because the Western world is decaying right before our eyes. Ask yourself this question. Are things better off than they were 20 years ago as far as people's mental health and their financial health? Are people better off? They might have fancier gadgets. They might have a car that has more computers on it. They might have a smartphone that does more than their old smartphone did several years back. But is society as a whole, is it better or is it worse? Well, in my opinion, it's gotten a whole lot worse. But I think we've just seen the tip of the iceberg. But the world is watching. The world is judging. And we are failing. I wish that wasn't the case. But you don't have to be part of that failure. Stand up for your traditional values. Get right with God. And get active in trying to right the ship. Because we need all hands on deck. Well, I hope you got something from this show today. I always appreciate Bob letting me sit in and talk to his great audience. And I'd like for you to consider contributing to Truth to Ponder to keep it on the air. Because it's your donations that keeps Truth to Ponder going week after week. And donating to Truth to Ponder is very easy. Just go to the website, truthtoponder.com. And click on the support tab. And then that will tell you how to electronically donate to the show. Or if you want to do it old school, you can mail a check or money order. And you would write the check out to Ancient Word Radio. And you would send it to Truth to Ponder, P.O. Box 510, P.O. Box 510, Chill Howie. C-H-I-L-H-O-W-I-E Chilhowie, Virginia and the zip code is 24319 and your support is greatly appreciated. Well, thanks for listening and until next time, stay vigilant, stay aware, keep your powder dry, stay strong, but most important of all, replace fear with faith. This has been Truth to Ponder with Bob Bierman. To find out more, visit our website truth, the number two and the word ponder dot com. That's truth, the number two 
truthtoponder.com. Truth to Ponder, shining the light of truth in a darkening world.